Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, um, I'm so happy to uh, join you all, and um, please enjoy your desserts, and I'll look the other way if you have that. Um, it was great to visit with Mayor Rawlings earlier and Director Thompson and, and some of the elected officials here, and I certainly am I'm proud to be here and to talk with you briefly. Um, I'll make no um, apologies for what I'm about to say, because this is not about Milwaukee, it's not about me, it is about the future of Dallas, the future of North Texas, the future of Dallas County. So I'm gonna share with you uh, what Milwaukee did, and, I, and maybe I should recaption this, because it says the Milwaukee success story. We're not done yet. And, and, and for, as a matter of fact, we're never done. And, and you may not be done, and you may be at the tip of the spear for years and years to deal with this issue. And so I'm gonna talk with you about how we did it and what it took to do it. And the fact that I would do it again when faced with that challenge. So there's a disclaimer. And again, I said, this is not about me, but I wanna make certain that it's not about Terry either. So there's a disclaimer that nothing I say has to do with anything that Terry and <laughs> would put forth. And that's to say that these are my opinions and some of the facts that come from the Milwaukee case. So this issue of teen pregnancy, the problem. The problem was that Milwaukee had the second highest teen birth rate in the nation. And we had been in the top 10 for what seemed like a lifetime. Over 30 years, the city of Milwaukee had been working on this issue, and we had never dropped below top seven in the nation in terms of birth weight. But that wasn't the biggest problem. The bigger problem was that Milwaukee didn't know that it had the problem, didn't think that it had the problem. This was the way that life was. And that's not okay. And as the mayor said, this is the way it is in Dallas. And it's just simply not okay. Because Dallas is sitting on the front porch of opportunity. Everything you need is in this room. But if you don't address this issue of teen pregnancy, you'll be forever sitting on the back porch of the Nile. And that's where Milwaukee was a few years ago. It took leadership, it took everyone being in the room who had more to gain than they had to lose. You can think about this. This is not about whether you're left or right or center, not about whether you're in red or blue, it's not about that. What do you have to gain by doing what's right? And what do you have to lose by doing absolutely the same thing? I'm not saying that it's wrong, I don't know everything that you're doing, but it has not worked. And so we have to deal with the notion. So what's the solution? Well, the solution was that when I came to Milwaukee and I, I held from Miami to Milwaukee, I moved there and prior to that I was in New York, I learned a lot from cab rides. And now there's Uber and Lyft and so many other things, but I took a cab ride and, and I told the cabbie what I was going to be doing in Milwaukee and he talked to me about, well, what you need to fix. You get a, a lesson learned. And they said, well, these kids are gonna have babies and that's the way it is. On my cab ride from Dallas Fort Worth to my hotel, without being provoked, the cab driver, I asked him how did he love Texas. I knew that he wasn't from this part of the world. He said he loved Texas, it's great. So I asked him, I said, well, how is it with the kids and the youth here? He said, well, I love Texas, I have children, but it's just clear that the kids in South Dallas are always gonna get pregnant. Now he's an Ethiopian national. He said that. He didn't know who I was. I never told him who I was. I never told him why I was here. And he gave me that without saying anything. This is who you are. This is your dirty linen. Whether you choose to clean it or not, it is who you are. It is your calling card. It is your Chamber of Commerce airport message. And you do a lot of things great in this state and this city, but this is who you are. And we have the ability to change all of that. So the solutions connect the pieces. And the pieces is in this room. I don't know everyone in this room, but it does not matter. I don't care who's not here. 
I care about who's here and what they're working on. You have to connect the pieces. And for us, it was the media. I co-chaired teen pregnancy for nearly a decade with the publisher and the president of the largest newspaper in the state of Wisconsin. She was my right hand. It was never above the fold. It was never on the front page until she came to the table. And her editors made certain that we were going to tackle this issue. We bought commerce. We bought businesses because it was affecting the tax levy. We couldn't do things. So we bought them to the table. We bought the faith-based community, and that was pretty tough. And for those in the room who understand what I'm about to say, I'm a PK. What is a PK? PK is a pastor's kid. It was difficult for me to even go to church, much less talk with faith leaders. But we bought them in the room. And I said, you can pray for what I am doing, but you cannot pray for me not to do it. <laughs> and they stayed in the room. And we bought youth into the room. We bought everyone. Because this cannot be a public health problem that the public health department only should solve. Director Thompson does a great job, but it can't not be on his department. It has to be all of us. So you have to connect the pieces. You gotta create change. Change where you are. Staying here is not going to work. And what that change looks like, we don't know. It, it, it happens, and it's going to happen based on what you do. You gotta create change. And I'm not saying that we monitor change daily, by the second, by the minute, but you will know when it changed. And for those who are lifers here in Texas, you know when Dallas changed. You can go back to that moment in time. And we hope to transform a community. And that's what we've done. And some of the tactics that I'm about to show you were not comfortable. And it wasn't for the love of my, my, my children and my wife coming home at night. I thought I was probably the most hated person in the city. And I had to do some really tough things, but it was not about me and it can't be about you. It has to be about the future of Dallas. So what are these pieces? And I deal in alliteration, so there are four A's. Adolescence, the most important component of this piece. Let me just take you back for a moment. Every single woman in this room has been a 14-year-old girl. Think about what you were doing at 14. Think about where you were living. Think about what was important to you. Now add a pregnancy to it. That's what these children are dealing with. For every man in the room, you've been a 14, 15-year-old boy. Think about what was important to you, whether it was basketball, football, track, baseball, or girls. Now add a baby to the equation. We have to go back and understand that this is about adolescence. Analytics. Yes, I'm a commissioner, and I deal with data and epidemiological information. You have to have the data to support what you're doing. So analytics are important. We can't do things that aren't replication possible in other parts of the world. We made certain that the metrics and the analytics supported what we were doing. You cannot like what I'm doing, but you're not going to prove to me that it's not possible. Awareness, and this is the one that got me in trouble. This is about media, and I think Katie got to it, and, and certainly Dr. Fleming earlier. They, they, they talked about having this outward look into our society, using the digital democracy in which we're under to make certain that we have pathways to reach children where they are. This cannot and will not be your grandmother's health department. And that's what I told my staff. And then perhaps the most important A of all is all in. The mayor is all in, collective efficacy. We all have to be in. And as my father once said, if you can't say amen, say oh my. We need to be all in. So adolescence, I have one. Actually, I have two children. I have a 10-year-old who won't stop talking and a 19-year-old who won't talk to me. <laughs> so it's a somewhat schizophrenic life that I lead. But nonetheless, adolescents are important. Just think about it. Think about the power of adolescence. How many of them there are in the world? These young people are gonna take our place whether we yield it, whether they 
steal it, but they're coming. And all that you built, all that you've done, all that you invested in could be lost in a moment because the future of Texas is going to be given over to those who follow. 60 plus million adolescents in the United States and growing. And yes, baby boomers are those of us who are half past autumn. That means over 50 for those who don't know. We're leaving. We're going to the sunset of our lives and our careers. And there's 60 million that are following us between 15 and 24. That's who's going to inherit all of this. And this is perhaps the architects. They're the ones that are going to decide the global future of nations. Not just North Texas. They're going to decide it all. All these investments are going to mean nothing if we don't deal with the most powerful component, which are adolescents. And we have to think beyond focus groups. Yes, we do focus groups with adolescents all the time, but they know we're coming. You bias it when you tell them we're going to talk to you about something. That cab driver didn't know what I was going to talk about. That was my focus group about North Texas. He told me who you are. And kids will tell you who the, you are if you engage them. And that engagement has to be serious, real, and something that they can trust. Youth engagement has to be all the time. How many times do you tell your kid to go outside, put on your hat, put on your coat? Don't forget that. Don't forget. It's always youth engagement. You're telling your children to do something all the time, 50,000 times, because why? It's important to you. We can't engage youth when it's important to us. We have to engage them all the time. So analytics, big data, big results. And we made certain that we had epidemiologists and biostatisticians in the room to make certain we had big data. And you have to do that. And, and again, this is where the analytics come in. Every team sets out to win the pennant get the NBA championship, win the Super Bowl. Without a goal, it means nothing. Milwaukee had been fighting this issue for 30 years. When I became health commissioner, I said, where's the goal? They never had a goal, an empirical goal that everyone could reach for back into. Now, the toughest part of being in Wisconsin is not dealing with teen pregnancy. The toughest part of me is being a lifelong Cowboy fan being in Wisconsin. <laughs> so I hope the Cowboys win again this year, as I do every year. So I have a goal. And again, if you have a goal, then you can move forward with the analytics. We use exponential functions to make certain that we could back into it. And it was a difficult thing, but here's where rubber met the road. We decided to target four graders to get to them. And I remembered my staff coming to me, my, 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 my teen pregnancy staff and disease control staff and others coming to me and said, Commissioner, we have to get to the kids earlier. And I said, what do you mean? They said, earlier. And they told me we had to get to them at eight. And I said, no. I don't want to live in a city where I have to show an eight-year-old how to put on a condom. I don't want to live in America where I have to show an eight-year-old how to put on a condom. So the compromise was a 10-year-old. Age appropriate, anatomically correct structures. We had to go into the lion's mouth and brush its teeth. I didn't want to do that. What kind of city do we live in where I have to show an eight year old how to put on a condom? That was the reality in the streets. But we had to do it. And we did do it. So we had the data. We had the biostatisticians, and we set the goal, 46%. Forever and branded into people's mind on billboards, on bus tails, 46, 46 by 2015. It was hard, yes, I know. I even hard at home, because my daughter was in the fourth grade. She was 10 years old. I walked in the house, and my, my wife asked me, are you sure this is what we need to do? She was so far from that world. She would never have that statistic. But if the statistics are right, my daughter growing up in Milwaukee had a 80% chance of becoming pregnant. Well, I'm better than that as a father. I'm better than that as a husband. I'm better than that as a brother. I'm better than that as an uncle. And so are you. It was never going to happen on my watch. Well, what about the other 161,000 girls 
who are in the same fourth grade. It was important for them. Digital. Everyone here has a phone. Data driven. That's what we have to be. And that was so important. It changed the game. So when we set our goal, we were riding the crest of a digital wave. And we knew that we could do something. So awareness. I'm going to go through this rather quickly. Number one thing with awareness is you got to tell the truth. I don't care what you do here in North Texas, but if you don't tell the truth, you're not going to win. You have got to air your dirty linen. And you got to let everyone out there know that it's not right what's happening in this state. You got to tell the truth. And then you got to reach your audience. This is not the audience that I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to reach whoever that cab driver told me about in South Dallas. So whatever we think is going to work is not what's going to work. We got to go to South Dallas and stay there for six to 10 years, not six to 10 weeks. That's what you got to do. And you got to change the culture. Cultural eat strategy for lunch, and we all know that, but you can change it. And if you can't change it, then don't worry about it. And if you can change it, then why are you worrying about it? We're all worried about teen pregnancy, but we can change that. So you shouldn't be worrying about it at all. So this is the beginning. This is the one that got me in trouble. And it should be shocking. It was a guerrilla tactics. And yes, these models, these are French models who were pregnant. And we have boys from Milwaukee who we superimposed their head on. The artist who gave, that, gave this to us was free. He wanted his work to be out there. And it was the beginning. The pregnant boy got us national attention. It turned heads. I remember the day I was going down Wisconsin Avenue and there was a four or five teens standing on the corner and the bus went by and they pointed. Pants sagging, hip hop music playing, and they all smile. And I went back to the office and I went back to the, the Greater Milwaukee United Way, who was our partner, and said, we're on to something. That was the moment that I knew that we had connected to where we needed to be. Everywhere you are, doesn't matter race, doesn't matter cultural, everywhere you are is where that campaign had to be. We went everywhere. And we took a lot of heat. Our mayor took a lot of heat. Our congressmen came to the meetings. They took heat, but I invited them to the meetings. Heavy message. Being a father for every father in the room, is a bigger burden than you think. But remember, you're 14. And the turning point for me was not even this campaign. The turning point for me on teen pregnancy was I was rounding in one of our acute care hospitals. And I rounded and I saw an 11 year old who had just delivered because the CEO wanted me to know that. But that wasn't the issue. It was an 11 year old who had delivered her second baby. I don't want to live in a city where 11 year old who's delivered their second baby. I remember interviewing the nurse who was in labor and delivery. She said, Commissioner, I had to leave labor and delivery. I still have nightmares. All I can remember is a nine year old girl screaming, Mommy, make it stop, who had a vaginal delivery. That's Milwaukee. That was our dirty linen. And yes, I said this on TV. I said it live because people needed to know what was happening. You need to go where kids are. This is what the reality is. They're not going to play basketball. They're not going to jump and cheer. Game is on. You need to understand that mothers become mothers of mothers. This becomes their baby. So we went after the mothers. And this is the one that really got me in trouble because men are on the prowl. The average age of the father who is not even listed on the birth certificate for babies born in Milwaukee was 24. Not one case of statutory rape has been bought in Milwaukee County in 30 years yet. We predict and we can validate about 40% of the births are from men over 25 with these teen girls. So they're snakes and they're rats and someone needed to call them that. We did a campaign called Hilo Rapist. I got in trouble for it. But if you know who you are, we pray for the sinner and not the sin. 
This is one of my favorite, and this was done by a teen mother, about all the things that she was feeling on her face, late night feedings, weight gain, suicide thoughts, and this was a major campaign. This is the one that we had, uh, and taxpayers got a lot of interest because they thought we paid a lot of money, but all the talent was given for this. We actually reached kids where there are. This is the movie trailer, and, and it goes a little bit like this. We reached kids where they are, and we wanted to punk them, and I wanted to show you how we did that. These are the bus tells. We, we, we have this movie trailers. The, the local theaters were involved. They showed this in real time with theaters. Everywhere we went, they did this. And the next thing that they did, they played this trailer. And I hope this works, because I don't know exactly how to do this. I came by myself. So that was played in theaters. And then we invited teens to get red carpet treatment to come to a viewing of the movie. It was promoted in all the theaters in Milwaukee. And then this happened when they got there. donated by Hollywood. The actress there was a Milwaukee graduate. She saw our campaign and said, I wanted to do something. She came from Hollywood, bought her film crew. Kids came, we did a reveal, we opened up the curtains. They didn't see the movie, they were upset. And the local, <laughs> but we had to do what we did. Here's another one very quickly. I'll go back to that. Let's see. Um, this one will make you laugh, but these, these this was interesting. That's what I heard. Mom and Dula was your sperm count. What? I drink it. If you put a tampon in after sex, you can't get pregnant. If you do jumping jacks after having sex, you won't get pregnant. Yeah, I read it on the internet. Oral sex isn't really sex. What? We have sex in the hot tub, you're gonna get pregnant. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, she was like, we can't have a baby if you drink a lot of Mountain Dew. You cannot get pregnant the first time you have sex. Oh, I might try that. It's not rape if she's your girlfriend. Again, we have to all be in on this. We have to have shared responsibility. We gotta go where kids are. We have to have active involvement all the time. This is not a one-time thing. You have got to reinforce these partnerships and alliances you have on the ground. They're already here. Some of you have known each other for decades. The partnerships are there. The doors are open. The question is, do we have the courage to walk through them? And we have to highlight these role models and mentors, and those are the kids. All these are local Milwaukee kids that are in these, these videos that were produced here. And we have to provide leadership training. Just because you work for a CBO, a grassroots organization, even a philanthropic agency or, or, or someone who does this work, you need to make certain that you give them training. Yes, and the, the success was there, the impact, you see the headlines, and this is when our whole city began to say that. We're doing something about it. Everyone was talking about it. And yes, this made the Today Show, 
BBC America, Brazil Today, all of these people were coming and calling and saying, how did you do it? And it was controversial. But what I wanted more than anything is for people to talk about it. People have to talk about it. Because if you're not talking about it, it becomes under a bridge in the shadows of humanity. And that's not where this issue needs to be. So as I get ready to close, the future of everything is here. The future of everything is in North Texas, is in Dallas and Dallas County. And you're going to have to navigate some uncharted waters. You're going to have to go where you never wanted to go. You're going to may have to say something you've never said. You may have friends, families, and relatives who don't want to even talk to you. But the future of everything is at risk. You're, you're going to have to share everything that you're learning with someone else. You get nothing when you do this. You get everything when you do that. You have to open your hands and your heart. And you're, you're going to have to. You're going to have to rise up. And you're going to you're gonna have to connect with people in this room and outside of this room. And, and, and you've got to collaborate. I mean, it's, it's just got to be one of those things where you, you do this. When I came here today, I didn't know what to expect. Going to a conservative state where high birth rates exist for teens. But I have a 10 year old who's counting on me to get this right. He's my prince. One day he will find a young girl. She may even be in this community. But he's counting on me and you and all of us who've learned everything that we can, who've given our whole careers and our lives to make this city, this state, and this nation better to get it right. And those of us who work on this issue every day, we know what needs to be done. This is America. And my little 10 year old prince, I took a plane from Milwaukee to Chicago, Chicago to Rome, Rome to DC, DC to Addis Ababa. I picked up this little boy and I brought him all the way back to America. He's an Ethiopian who I adopted. And for me to tell him that he has a better chance of going to jail, being incarcerated, and that his sister would be pregnant before she 18 is not the America that I live in. This is not the Texas that you live in. So what I'm asking you to do is to rise up, connect, and collaborate. And what wouldn't you do? It's not about what Dallas is doing. What wouldn't you do for the future of everything? And that's what this is about. I want to celebrate in advance because I'm going to come back to Texas. I'm going to celebrate with you. And I'm going to bring my 10-year-old, who's a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. And we're going to go to a football game. And I can be able to tell him that he's in a county where the team birth rates have gone down. So when I get on the plane tonight, I'll call him and say, what did you do in Texas? I said, I talked to some good people who get ready to tackle an impossible problem. But they're doing it for you, and I thank you.